You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome, welcome, folks. I'm Jamie Migdahl, and this is Pets Mean Business. What? Pets Mean Business? Yeah, well, I've been in the industry for the pet industry, that is, for 20 years. And I'll tell you, not one single day has ever gone by in those 20 years where I haven't felt personally and professionally inspired by or truly tickled by someone's brilliant product idea or innovation in taking care of animals or by someone's boundless passion to throw it all away, walk away from corporate golden handcuffs and launch their own animal welfare organization. And so when you think about this and you see that this is happening in this $60 billion industry, you have to wonder who are these incredible individuals that are building and growing and working in this space. And if you are someone who is sitting there right now thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute, $60 billion? Wait a minute, innovation, a product, a passion, a business, entrepreneur? Wait a minute, that's me. Well, then this is exactly what you should be listening to. The right show at the right time. Because what we talk about here at Pets Mean Business is how to take passion and innovation and ideas and insight and experience and find a place for those things in the $60 billion pet industry. So I'm here for you. I'm Jamie Migdahl. I am your host or your hostess. I'm not sure which one it is, but regardless, I am here for you to help explore this space. You can always find me, reach me, ask me questions, jamie at petliferadio.com. And together, we will explore what it means to be working with pets and how pets mean business. This is episode two, and I am so happy because, you know, part of the pet industry isn't, it isn't so much just about products and services and things, but it's also about people and it's about passion and it's, it's about helping and it's about kind of getting down to the to the real reason that this industry exists, which is our love for animals. And so in episode one, Sue Sternberg, if you haven't listened to that episode, please do because it's phenomenal, if I must say so myself. We had Sue Sternberg, who's an amazing animal advocate and has such great messages. And in episode two, in our second show here, we have another social entrepreneur. That's kind of the way I'm going to approach this. We have a, a wonderful, smart woman with a ponytail. Her name is Kristen Ludwig, and she is going to be joining us after the break. She is a, a biologist by education and an animal lover at heart, and she has this incredible organization that we're going to be talking about and learning about. And also, you know, the whole idea in having Kristen as a guest today is because what she's doing in the pet space, in the nonprofit pet space, is so innovative and so interesting. And if you're sitting there listening and, you're, and you feel like you just want to find a space for yourself, Kristen found a way to do that and create a business around it. And she's done so with a bird. Yes, a bird. So if I've piqued your interest, that's great because that's my job. And we're going to take a break. We're going to come back and we are going to talk about birds with a ponytailed woman named Kristen, who is going to tell us everything there is to know about how to help people with animals. We'll be right back. Tired of wasting money on giant boxes of litter that don't work and don't last? Switch to World's Best Cat Litter, the only litter with concentrated power. So even a small bag lasts one cat 30 days. Outstanding odor control, quick clumping, lightweight. It's even flushable. World's Best Cat Litter. Everything else is just litter. Find it near you at www.itsnotjustlitter.com. That's www.itsnotjustlitter.com. Hi, Jill. I see you and Bella are enjoying this lovely day as well. It's a perfect day for a walk. Isn't that right, Bella? And what a colorful ID tag you have, Bella. It certainly puts my Rusty's boring engraved tag to shame. Isn't it great? It's a dog tag art tag. Dog tag art? Yeah. Dog tag art makes the world's coolest pet ID tags. Pick from hundreds of cute designs or upload your photos or artwork to create a unique tag of your own. They even give you four lines of text on the back of the tag for important contact information. I love it! But do they hold up? We have to replace Rusty's metal tags so often because the information wears away. Dog tag art tags are some of the highest quality pet tags out there. They're made with super durable stainless steel. Your information is always legible and the tags are guaranteed for life. Well, I'm sold. 
Where can I get my dog tag art tag for Rusty? Dogtagart.com. Shopping there is so easy and fun. You're sure to find one that matches Rusty's personality perfectly. Sounds great. We can't wait to get online and get a tag of our own. Dogtagart.com. We keep best friends together. Use the coupon code RADIO for a 25% discount off any tag. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for hanging with us through the break. I am Jamie Migdahl, and I'm your host at When Pets Meeting Business. If you're here, that means that there's something about pets and business and entrepreneurship and passion that speaks to you. And that's why we created this radio show for you, the interested party of the pet industry. And as I mentioned before the break, I have a wonderful guest today. And I am grateful that she took the time to spend with us. She's really busy building an incredible organization. Her name is Kristen Ludwig. Um, I called her the lady with the ponytail because in her book, which is called Nubs, a little bird with a big story. That's how she calls herself. So I'm not being um, I'm not being goofy. Kristen, don't you call yourself the lady with the ponytail? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. First, I want to just I want to give the name of the website. And so if someone wants to go ahead and multitask, and while listening to our interview and to our show, they can also get on the website. Why don't you go ahead and give your website name out? Sure. Our, our website is www.houseofnubs.org. Okay, so I feel like nubs need to be N-U-B-S, which stands for? Which stands for No Unwanted Birds. Okay, so we're going to have to talk about that. We're going to talk about what that is and how that all came to be. And Instagram is at house underscore of underscore nubs. And Facebook is just nubs, right? Facebook is just nubs. You just look for a little budgie sitting in a little director chair. And that's nubs. (laughs) Okay, so you're an entrepreneur. How did you get here? Tell me, who is nubs and, and how did nubs make you an entrepreneur? Well, our backstory is is kind of interesting. Um, Nubs was part of a very large bird hoarding situation that happened in the fall of 2010. He was one of uh, about 500 birds that had been living in a home of a gentleman in in Aurora, Illinois. And I became involved in that rescue, really just because I heard it on the radio. It was a huge effort for that area, and it was really the first and only very, very large bird hoarding incident we had had in this area. 368 birds were removed live from the home, and 150 of the birds were actually already deceased in in that house. Okay. Nubs was one of those birds, and I was one of the volunteers that worked with, with the birds. And the reason why Nubs in particular caught my attention, and of course he didn't really have a name, none of the birds had, had names at that time, but of all the birds, he was clearly extremely sick. He was inbred. He was very, very tiny. And he's also handicapped. He has one foot, one nub. So that is how I um, I nicknamed him, really just to identify him as one of the many, many, many birds in this rescue. But what was unique and special about Nubs was where all the other birds were members of a wild flock and had no tameness around people whatsoever, Nubs was remarkably friendly. And whereas all the other birds would want to fly around and do, you know, bird things, Nubs wanted to hang out with me. <laughs> and so during the 60 days or so while he was in, um, we brought him to an emergency shelter, he and I became best friends. And so his the story that we ended up writing about him after this whole event is a true story. It's the story of an, an unlikely friendship <laughs> between a, a very small budgie in, in need of help and a, a human willing to help him. And this was um, 2010. This is all 2010? This is when this started? Yeah, that was in the fall of 2010. Okay. Almost all of the birds from the rescue ended up going to live in a zoo aviary where they've been allowed to continue to live as a wild flock. And that really was the best for these birds. These birds really weren't pets. Um, they were you know, breeding freely in a, in a house. Um, and they weren't used to being caged and they weren't used to people at all. So that was a good solution for them. But Nubs, being that he really would not have survived in that environment, and because of his special handicaps and his other health needs, I ended up um, adopting him and bringing him home with me. Was that immediately? Let me ask you, Kristen. Let me ask you this. It was an immediate. Did you fall in love at first sight, or was it kind of a was it a process before you recognized that this bird was meant to live with you? 
Oh no, I I immediately I immediately recognized that he was different, that he he was special. That night that we were first bringing the birds into the shelter, we were individually having to wash of the birds and sort them by what their health needs were. And I think that very first night, he stood out to me because he wasn't scared. He wanted to hang out with me. And I just thought that that was very strange. I applied to adopt him, you know, within 24 hours of, of meeting him, not even being sure if he would survive or not or what other kind of issues he had. But I could tell off the bat that he liked me a lot. And I thought, well, you know, why not? I had no intention of adopting any of the birds from the rescue. But there he was. And just seemed, it just felt right. And at the time, I was working with some volunteering. I have a couple of therapy dogs. And we were volunteering with kids at the time, too. And, you know, the more I would talk to these kids about the rescue that had taken place, and I would tell them about Nubs specifically, they were so fascinated with the idea that this little budgie who shouldn't trust people at all was, for whatever reason, reaching out to me and willing to, you know, take my hand and let me help him. How old were those kids, mm-hmm. by chance? How old were those kids? Mostly grade school age. Okay. Okay. Mostly, so that was... Know, one- First through fourth, first through fifth. Some okay, teenagers, so though, too. Okay. Just want to get a sense of kind of the audience that was hearing this, yeah. the story of Nubs and how they responded. I think that's a really important part of, yeah, and, of what and brought you to where you are. Written, the book was actually written for them. So these were kids that I was volunteering with in a group foster home situation. And and I found the more they were asking about, about the man who had committed this crime and about the birds and about Nubs himself and asking a lot of questions about forgiveness. And when someone does something wrong to you, you know, do you have to forgive them? And what if this man apologized? Would it make it okay? And, and the more questions they asked, the more I realized they really weren't asking about Nubs anymore. They mm-hmm. were asking about themselves. Mm-hmm. And they were hearing what Nubs was doing in terms of bravely giving life a second chance, and they were contemplating it for themselves. And so that's why I wrote the book, was to communicate the full story to them, and really the whole organization spun out of that, because once we realized that those kids were hearing this message, and it was resonating with them and helping them in their lives, we realized, well, well, there's a lot of other kids out there that might benefit from this as well. So you, in that moment, identified that Nubs' journey from uh, being in an abusive situation to having this this angel come and, and give a second opportunity for Nubs to have a life. You saw that there's an opportunity to deliver a message there through Nubs' story, obviously. How did you know, and were you able to have the conversations with those kids? And as you saw that transition happening, where it went from a, being about Nubs to being about them, how did you bridge those conversations? And were you able to go there? Was it appropriate to say, hey, you know, I see some pain here, or I see some stuff coming up for you guys. Were you able to do that? Or did you stay and have all of those conversations and dialogues only about the animals? Or did it go into talking about the kids' experiences and fears and things? Well, I think what we do is we do always answer it from from Nubs' perspective. We have other Mm -hmm. books now about other animals. And so Mm -hmm. we always take that from the animal's perspective. But what we do is in these kind of settings, they always have their own counselors are around. So they are in counseling programs. They have therapists who are working with them. And so what we try to do is we're just trying to give them feelings of self-empowerment, a feeling that maybe there's something around the corner. We're just giving, we're just planting that seed in their minds. We aren't there to provide them therapy for, for trauma that they have been through. Resiliency building is really something that, that all kids need, whether you've been through a trauma or not. In fact, I contend you need it more even before you've been through any kind of a situation in life. So really what we're doing is just that building up of some self-esteem, some self-empowerment, what we call bouncing back from the ability to bounce back from things that happen to you. And that's what we demonstrate through Nubs and through our other stories as well now. So we really aren't there to be part of their counseling, but we are there to be part of their general well-being. Kristen, what's your background? Um, I know that your degree is in biology, but what brought you to be, what brought you to this fluency, to this space of compassion and counsel? How did you get here? Well, I have a few different degrees. I, you know, I do have a, my undergrad is in biology and then my graduate degrees are in biochem and also in, um, I have an MBA in marketing and in international business. So running the business of nubs is really <laughs> made more possible by, by the fact that I have an MBA it makes it, makes it easier. Um, in terms of why this type of organization is, you know, I just come from a family that has always done volunteering just as a part of, you know, 
day to day life. It's just something mm-hmm. we've always been involved in, and I've always been an animal, involved in animal rescue and and been involved in therapy, animal work for a long time. I really like kids. <laughs> I really like animals. So to me, that those are natural areas for me to be volunteering in. And in terms of spinning it into a, a business, it was all rather opportunistic. I think that this this bird happened, and we wrote this story, and it got some media attention, and then it all went from there. So I definitely uh, am more interested in if I was going to start a business for myself, being in a nonprofit space than being in for profit because I'm already in for profit. So I thought, okay, this would be this would be interesting. Where were you working at the time when you first started developing the concept and putting the organization together? Where what were you doing at the time for your career? Well, I'm still working. <laughs> this is my second business. So yeah, I, I work as a marketing manager for a bioscience company. Okay. So totally unrelated field. But I think, you know, biology and animals certainly always goes hand, hand in hand. And right now, I, the stuff I do is in plant science. But, you know, as a biologist, you're interested in all forms of life, of course. So, and I have a lot of background in genetics and things like that. So, Nubs' specific inbreeding situation has always been something I understand and, um, you know, I've been interested in working with him. And also as a scientist, I'm just interested in fidgeting with stuff. And so figuring out the right way for him to live comfortably and safely as a handicapped animal um, has always been a big interest of mine from the beginning. So that's been actually really a lot of kind of interesting times, you know, working with his vets on, on how to do things right. So I don't know if that answers your question no, exactly, no, it, but listen, kind it, of a varied background. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a great discussion because it, it certainly begs the question and brings to, I think, brings for me front of mind that you found a way to, and opportunistically, as I think all great businesses are born out of opportunity, but you found a way to marry these two sides of, I'll say, of your brain <laughs> and of your life. I mean, you have, you, you brought biology and business together in an incredibly meaningful way, and you're touching the lives of many. You and I spoke to that point, you and I spoke a little bit before we started recording our show about that there's a little bit of confusion when you talk about nubs at a cocktail party or at a park or somewhere, that there's a little bit of confusion when they think, or or maybe when they see the website or they see a a Facebook page that they think that there's a rescue element to what nubs' story. I think it's helpful. I think it's helpful for listeners to hear about how how to communicate that to people, that if you're working in in a nonprofit animal-related organization, that they're not all about rescue. And I do think that that's something Something that a lot of business, a lot of organizations, nonprofits have to overcome that concept of, well, if you're not an animal shelter, then what can you possibly be doing? Yeah. So, can you speak yeah. to that? How do you, if I knew nothing, how would you talk to me about that? So, if I, so let's just sure. let's play, we role play, let's role play. So, I say, hey, Kristen, uh, I saw your Facebook page. So, you rescue birds? Yeah, well, I, I think the way that I, I typically, what I explain to people, you know, we, we did initially consider being a, uh, a bird rescue. But there's a lot of things involving, involved with um, the financing of that and um, making sure that you have adequate veterinary staff and disease protocols and disease testing, which is extremely expensive. Um, so I was a little concerned about diving into to that. Not to say we never will, but right now that's not where we think we have a good fit. Where I thought we had a, a good niche that was an unmet need were, frankly, in resiliency building. And at that time, I didn't even really know what resiliency building was. It wasn't until later when we got more counselors and, and therapists and people like that on our board of directors that I came to, to really understand um, what this unmet need was. But I thought, you know, this is a great way that we can take therapy animals and animals that have been trained to be with kids we can find new ways to communicate a, a new method of doing resiliency building. And this is a way that we've got a, a business that is related to animals, but is also related to kids. That's the community that we're serving. So, you know, we don't take in rescued animals from people, nor do we adopt out our animals. I've had, <laughs> I've had requests, but um, no, they are all the animals that you see on our Facebook page, for example, they are my pets and, and are much loved. And where they are working animals, they are also very, very loved animals as well. <laughs> are all the animals yours? All the animals that work within the organization with the kids and the programs are all your pets? No, not all of them. We have a very careful screening protocol that we follow, but we do have other volunteers in our organization who are also using their animals. Now, that being said, too, live visits with animals is is really only a small portion of what the organization does. Most of what we're working on now is developing communication tools for kids 
where the animals don't have to be there live in order for the message to come across. All right. So if you think of Sesame Street, you're not sitting there in a room with Kermit the Frog, but you feel that you know Kermit the Frog very well, and in the meantime, he's teaching you how to count, for example. So that's the similar kind of strategy that we do with our House of Nubs YouTube channel and with our Nubs Facebook page. You will feel that you know the animals extremely well, even if you don't ever actually meet them in person. And it's more about the books and the other tools that we're developing that are actually the educational pieces. I want to talk so much more about the business and the lessons that you've learned and how you're scaling your business and also get some real tactical information about how people, some good advice about how people can on their own do pet therapy work with their own animals, whether it be with nubs or another organization. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to go down that path. So get ready, everybody. We're going to talk how the hows and the whens and the whys and the whos and all of that good stuff as it relates to Kristen Nubs and pet entrepreneurship and, and social good. I'm Jamie Migdahl. This is Pets Mean Business. We'll be right back. Amazing Pet Expos is coming to a city near you. Admission is always free and your pet is welcome. Shopping, adoptions, free nail trims, discounted shots and microchipping, agility, a pet costume contest, and much more. Plus, meet the guys from Animal Planet's hit TV series Tank and Pit Boss online at AmazingPetExpos.com. Bring your pets to the Pet Expo. Calling all pet product manufacturers and pet experts. Let the public relations and marketing professionals at Whitegate PR get you featured in the news. I'm Dana Humphrey at Whitegate PR, and we have been specializing in pet product PR for over 10 years and can get your brand featured in the media from TV to radio to print to blogs. You can find out more at www.whitegatepr.com. Active for Pets is a new wellness platform and app that helps pet parents save time and money on their vet bills. Stop paying for unnecessary vet treatments. Consult with a vet online. Get unlimited access to your pet's entire health history from any computer or smartphone with the Active for Pets app. Vaccinations, medications, test results, and more. Active for Pets gives you access to a team of expert vets for non-emergency care. Make an appointment before, during, or after office hours. Skip the waiting room and get a secure online vet consult on your schedule. Taking care of your pets is as easy as it gets with Active for Pets. Ready to try Active 4 Pets? Listeners get 40% off a one-year membership. To get this great offer, use promo code PETLIFE on the sign-up page of Active4Pets.com. That's A-C-T-I-V, the number 4, P-E-T-S dot com. Or call 888-512-2848. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. We're back. We're back. We're back. We are back. This is Jamie Migdahl, your host of Pets Mean Business. And with us today, we've been having a wonderful conversation with Kristen Ludwig, who is our founder and managing director of Nubs. Nubs is an organization who is named after her beautiful budgie, or I think most people would consider that a parakeet. She's built this incredible organization uh, with alongside her bird, her rescued bird of building resiliency in kids through these inspirational stories of animals, and some of them may be female animals, of animals who have have come through terrible and trying circumstances and are now have now been given life a second chance and Kristen has brilliantly figured out a way to grow this organization with that message and with that mission and has done some I think that what you're doing Kristen is people are going to find so unbelievably inspiring because you're touching on so many things that I feel like when people consider volunteerism animals and people kids especially you found this amazing way to marry 
marry these concepts and these opportunities and these needs. And I, I'm quite honestly, I, I'm going to be very honest with you right now. As part of the time that we've had here together, I've had a few moments where I have just gotten lost in what you're saying. And <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, really, I need in a you good to know. Way or a bad way. Yeah, <laughs> like in the most, ama- like I just had a moment. I'm, I'm sitting here listening to you, and I'm, I'm sitting in my office. I'm at my desk on my computer, and I'm we're recording our episode. And I, you know, I'm all business. I've got all my notes, and I'm all ready. And I, I've done my research, and I'm ready to go. And I, I have. I've had this moment, it's happened twice during our call or during our interview, where I just got lost and just, I've had my breath taken away. And almost, and I, I don't want to even cry right now. This is so unbelievable, but I feel very emotional by really understanding and hearing the work that you're doing. I don't know, it's left a host speechless, if you will. And I, I say that, I hope that the genuine feelings are coming out the right way, because this is, your organization is just so special. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I like enough to, if you think about Sesame Street, Sesame Street didn't start with a bunch of Muppets and fun times and, you know, that kind of thing. Sesame Street started because those people recognized that inner city children in New York City were starting grade schools and they didn't know how to read and write. Their parents weren't teaching them at home and they weren't, they couldn't afford preschool. Right. To me, what Nubs is doing today is just like that back then. We found a way, you know, resiliency. Every child is going to go through something in life. All of us go through something in life. We cannot avoid it. But we don't teach our children how to weather the storms. We don't even tell them that there's a storm coming. To me, that's a gap in childhood education. So what we're doing is the same thing. Let's find a way to be entertained, to be cool. One thing the kids will look at, they'll look at a bird. Look at this, look at this, look at this. You know, birds are entertaining. Birds will do all kinds of cool stuff. We can put them into these scenes where kids can go, wow, and they look at it because it's an animal. What they don't realize is they're capturing a message. Eventually, they always realize (laughs) that they're capturing a message. But it's the same thing. Let me entertain you and let me sneak in education. Only education, in this case, is resiliency. So So you can live your life with strength. So, Kristen, do you know, and you, I don't know if you know, but I'm, I'm a mom of a three-and-a-half-year-old daughter. Her name is Sadie, and she's awesome. And we have two dogs and a cat at home. Obviously, not a, not a surprising thing for me to say. And, I mean, obviously, I, having dogs and cats in our household, it's a no-brainer, and it, they're my family. I don't even know how to put that. But when we had a baby, it wasn't ever, it was never a question. It was more of the question of, I did this, and I feel like I'm so grateful that I did this and that I've approached things, is that how are these pets in Sadie's life going to teach her lessons? It was never about Mm -hmm. these are your sisters these are your dogs I mean there's always that underlying piece but for me I have really focused on really focused on when something happens with or to one of our pets there's such a great conversation to have and a great learning and it's such a a teachable moment it's not and I see the empathy developing in Sadie and I don't take any credit I mean I take some credit for that because I think I'm a good mom but I honestly give 90% of the credit for that development of empathy and that and that kind of um, trying to the way of that she's interacting with issues and problems and struggles I think a lot of that goes to the pets in fact I'll tell you a quick story a couple of days ago in fact I think it was yesterday she was having a meltdown as three and a half year olds are wont to do and I mean a meltdown like one of these like bad meltdowns right where she's like I want this no I want that blah, you know just crazy and I you know I what can I do I don't even know what to do because she's just having such a bad moment she's tired we're way past the safety zone for a three and a half year old and I said you know you need to take some deep breaths and let's reset. And I turned around for one second, not to walk away from her, but literally just turned around. We were in the kitchen. I turned around and I was going to get her something to drink, in fact. And I turned back around. So we're talking four or five seconds and she was gone, right? And she had stopped crying. And I went into the living room, which is right off of our kitchen. And underneath our coffee table was Rami, our rescued gray, short haired, awesome cat. And she was on the floor on her belly telling Rami that she was upset. And I mean, but it was like this magical moment where I thought, good, you know what, you just took care of yourself, you have a relationship with an animal, you see that you need to come to some solution. And there is an, an our pet, in this case, Rami, our cat facilitated that engagement and facilitated that thinking. And the time passed, and she was fine, and everything went fine. But we had a talk yeah. about it later on that night. And I said, did Rami help you? You know, did Rami, did Rami help you? And she thought about it and she said, Rami knew I was sad. Um, (laughs) Yeah, and and that ability, there's actually seven, they call them the seven critical attributes that make up resiliency in in all people. Um, you tell me, tell me what those are. What are they? Empathy? empathy? Okay, I'm I'm actually writing these down because I just, (laughs) okay. Empathy, (laughs) say them them slow so people can write them down too. Empathy? Emotional regulation. 
Emotional the regulation. To stay calm under pressure and express emotions in a way that helps the situation. Impulse control. Causal analysis, which is the ability to analyze problems and decide what the actual causes were. Empathy. Realistic optimism, which actually is the understanding, the ability to understand the feelings and needs of someone else besides yourself, which is, you could say is sort of related to um, empathy as well. Self-efficacy, which is what you were describing your daughter is doing, which is that ability to solve problems and handle stress and that you have an ability to persevere. And reaching out, the ability to reach out to others and the ability to take new opportunities, all of those things are the critical attributes that are associated with resilience. So people who are resilient by nature have a good command over those seven things. And that's what the Wings Up program is all about, is about focusing on those seven seven critical areas of development. Is the, that correct? Are the Wings Up, actually for Wings Up, because to say you're going to hit all seven, though, that's pretty like, wow, you know. For Wings Up, we concentrate on two of those attributes which is self-efficacy, so that belief that you have the ability to solve problems and handle stress and that you can persevere, and empathy, the ability to understand the feelings and needs of, of someone else. So that's exactly what the Nubs book and our other books do. You know, you hear Nubs, you hear his story, you know, you might feel bad for Nubs, that's empathy. You might see him persevering and go, you know what, I could that, I could do that too. That's self-efficacy. How are you making um, money? We primarily, well, it's, it's all donations. Again, it's nonprofit. Yep, so yep. we, most of our donations are coming in related to products. So our books do very well for us. We have a bunch of other products too, which you can find out through our website. But we have various fundraising things that we do. So we try to make unique products that are um, either commissioned by an artist or something special and unique that you wouldn't find some other place. Things get offered up on a limited time basis, and then we switch out and we go on to something else. So we, we have um, you know a number of different products that we'll, we'll develop. I think product development has actually been one of our strengths. So that has been a really good way for us to raise funds. We also just received a, a grant from the Charter Oak Foundation that is, is going to help us launch our an efficacy study of our Wings Up program. Congratulations. Um, we need to, thank you. So we can start gathering data you know, and, and proving that these outcomes um, that we're expecting to see, that we will see them statistically. And also, we just have people donate to us. I mean, we are a nonprofit, so people can use it as a write-off on their taxes. And, you know, there are people who need to, to do that for tax purposes, and sure. we try to make ourselves known <laughs> for that purpose. And we <laughs> you do are, fundraisers and things like that. You're a willing check taker. We're willing to take your donation. <laughs> uh -huh. Good for you, as you should be. As you should be. So, <laughs> all right. So, we only have a few minutes left, and I want to make sure we talk a little bit more, or at least give some information about if I am uh, listening right now and I'm hearing you and I'm inspired by you, and I'm sure that every single person listening is feeling exactly that way. What are three things that you would recommend to someone if they wanted to right now investigate getting involved in either animal therapy work? or looking at creating their own nonprofit as it relates to animals? Your three I, top best things. I would say that my three top things would be be legal. Uh, make sure that you understand the rules of being a nonprofit and that you're in compliance with the IRS at all times. I think there's a lot of people operating as nonprofits who, who are not legal nonprofits, and I think that's not a good place to be in. Um, okay. You'll find the government is forgiving of many things as long as you talk with them. So if you're confused okay. about the process, reach out to another nonprofit. Most people are perfectly happy to, to help you walk through the process. The second one I would say is liability. I would never recommend that anyone take their animals. You know, a lot of people say, oh, that's so much fun. It looks like so much fun. I'll take my bird to my kid's school. That's a really bad idea. If you have not been trained in therapy animal work, that kind of thing, you may want to go to like petpartners.org or, you know, a group like that that trains people in how to do this type of work that will can certify your animal. I think it's safety should be first and foremost, safety for the people that you work with and safety for your animals. So our group that does go out live with people, Coven Dub Squad, all of our volunteers, they're all trained. We have very careful policies and procedures. We have protocols that everyone needs to follow for sanitation, for disease, for safety. We carry our own liability insurance. There's a lot more to it than just showing up someplace with an animal. I wouldn't recommend it for your animal or for the people that you are working with and, and to take that seriously. And your last piece of great, awesome Ooh. Kristen Nubs advice? I would say don't be afraid. I would oh. say that, you know, if, if you've got a cool idea, then start putting it out there and see who, 
Kulov will will join together with you. You know, we didn't we didn't we've never had to recruit for volunteers. We've never had to we really haven't had to push very hard to get donations or, or work that hard to get people to help us. It's, it's just been a matter of letting people know that we have an idea, and then people say, "Wow, well, I do this. Can I help you? And can I help you? And can I help you?" And um, that's really how we've grown to where we are. And I mean, that being said, we're not you know we're not at a point where people can quit their jobs and, <laughs> and start getting a salary through nubs. But Yet. we are debt free, and we're reaching thousands of kids. So uh, for the stage that we're at, a couple years old in terms of an organization, you know, it's not half bad. It's all good. It's not half bad. It's all good. Kristen, you are <laughs> you are a pleasure and an inspiration, and I feel so excited for people to learn about Nubs if they don't already know about your organization and to take a look at your Facebook page and your website. That's houseofnubs.org. Instagram is at house underscore of underscore nubs. Kristen, can you give an email if someone's listening right now and they just can't wait to talk to you? How can they, um, <laughs> how can they find sure. you and give the email? Yeah, our email is houseofnubs at gmail.com. And then also, of course, you can hit the Contact Us page on our website, and we're always happy to talk with anybody about anything. Wonderful. I am grateful for your time. Listeners, friends, folks out there who are looking to get involved in the pet space as an entrepreneur or otherwise volunteer or just to kind of check things out you are at the right place with us here at when pets mean business if you have any questions if there's any guests that you want to hear if there's anything that you are aching to understand about what it means to work with pets i'm here to help you answer those questions you can reach me anytime jamie at petliferadio.com but for today that is it please join me and wherever you are sitting or standing right now and say thank you thank you Kristen. i'm so happy that you were here with us great Grateful, excited, and uh, <laughs> really, and really impressed. And really impressed. Everybody, thank you so much. This is When Pets Mean Business on Pet Life Radio Network. I'm Jamie McDowell, and I will see you next time. Thanks for listening. Let's talk pets every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.